welcome everyone welcome good morning good evening wherever you have joined from i know there are so many registrations today we have about 200 people as of now what i look in the zoom participant section and hopefully this will go up thanks very much i hope this next 60 minutes is worth your time just to give you a quick background about today's session let me just check if microphone is all good yeah okay so the background is I decided to do this webinar in two part series. Part one focused on query tuning aspects. And I talked about statistics, indexes, and tweaking the query. Now you might think that, oh, again, indexes, again, stats, and all that basic stuff. No, not at all. It's a, it's a very, uh, uh, you know, the, the code, the query, the workload that I took was very real world-like, and I have taken some uh, uh, very real world like problems. So you should definitely take a note to watch part one. And as I have been talking about part one, it is available on sqlmaestros.com. You can just uh, log on to the website, go to the video courses section, scroll down and locate part one. And um, yeah, uh, some of our friends are putting the links down in the chat window and you can use it. Part one and part two are totally disconnected in sense they are, they are uh, different demos and they address different problems. So that was part one about query tuning. What am I doing in part two today? We are going to talk about server tuning as a whole. Remember both part one and part two is all about the performance tuning and optimization. In part one, we dealt with the query itself. In part two, I'm trying to show you a few knobs and switches that you can turn on and off to see if you can get some performance improvement. That is part two, which is happening today. And by next week, even part two, this one that you're watching live right now will be available as a free video course. Do not worry about adding the product to the cart. And you know, you might be thinking, oh, I have to punch in my credit card number and all of that, not at all. They are free, they're priced at $0. So just go and add it to the cart and check out. You don't have to punch in anything and you, you can instantly access those courses. Okay, let's get started with part two now. My name is Amit Bansal and I have been working with SQL Server for a couple of years now, precisely 25, 26 years. I started in late 97, 98 kind of, uh, and SQL Server 6.5 was the first version that I worked with. And since then, yeah, it has been, um, <clears throat> uh, um, you know, a great experience working with this product and seeing it mature over the years. I've done it. I've done so many things around SQL Server. Performance tuning has been one of my core areas of expertise. I do performance tuning consulting work along with my team. I, I do a lot of training. I do video courses, hands-on labs, uh, master classes lot of all that stuff. Everything is available on sqlmaestros.com. And here are some links in the chat window in case you wish to stay connected with me. Now, let's get started with part two. There are precisely three things that I'm going to show you today in part two. And that's why I, you know, kind of term it as top three. I mean, you know, top three, top four, or top two uh, could be debatable, but it's just like, these are some things that I generally do in SQL Server production boxes. So what are those three things? First thing, I'm going to talk about cost threshold of parallelism. You might have heard of this CTP, which is an advanced setting at the server level. That's the first thing I'm going to play around with. The second thing is going to be read committed snapshot isolation. Um, in short form, you call this as RCSI. So SQL Server has two concurrency models. By default, it is pessimistic concurrency model. And I'm going to show you the optimistic version of that. So we're going to look at optimistic concurrency model. That's the second thing. And the last thing, the third thing that we are going to see, uh, we're going to look at trace flag 4199 and a few things around that. Okay, so time to get started. Are we all ready? Yes. Can I have some few things in chat window if you're all ready to roll on with the demos? Okay, perfect. All settled in. Yes, keep your phones in silent mode or vibration or whatever and see there are no distractions because you're going to love the demos. There are no slides, by the way. Okay, let's get started. 
I have connected with SQL Server engine here using dedicated administrator connection. Okay, this particular window is a dedicated administrator connection. So if I click on change connection here, I just want to show this to you. I've done all of that already just to save some time. So if I zoom in here, you can see the connection parameter, the options that I've used, admin colon SQL maestros. That's the server and admin colon means I'm using DAC. Now, some of you who are working in the capacity as a DBA might know what a DAC is. It stands for Dedicated Administrator Connection. When SQL Server goes unresponsive due to whatever reason, you have this as a, as a you know, kind of a lifesaver to connect to SQL Server and run all sorts of diagnostic stuff. And remember, you are allowed only one DAC connection. So if I try to do this again, it won't work. Also take a note, Sometimes connecting with DAC will show up a lot of silly errors, and I've just done away with all of that. For example, you can't have Object Explorer open on the left side of SSMS. Oh, no, that doesn't mean that you can open it on the right side. What I mean is Object Explorer cannot be open because Object Explorer uses another connection, as you know. So you just can't have two DAC connections. You can have only one DAC connection. So the easiest way is advanced setting uh, there is something called as remote admin connection so let me just jump over here and sh show this to you remote admin connections you need to turn this on and reconfigure that's the first thing you need to do and then you open up ssms make sure you have turned off object explorer and then just go to the dialog box and connect using admin okay colon and the server name so we are done with that now second thing and you know the reason why I am connected with SSMS using DAC here right now, because you know it, we are going to stress SQL Server to the extent that it will become unresponsive. Uh, and then I need to you know, have a mechanism to go and run some diagnostic queries. Now let's get started. First thing, how many threads are there inside SQL Server at the moment? So if I click on execute, it shows a number like 120, 121, something like that. And these are the number of threads. Thread is the lowest unit of execution. When you send your query to SQL Server, at the least, it requires one thread for its execution. We also kind of use the terminology, the worker thread. Now, all these 121 threads are not necessarily user threads. There are certain background processes that are running, which are consuming these threads, but your user threads are also part of this count that you are seeing. So look at this number 121. Now, there is another concept of waiting tasks and wait stats and all of that. When you send your query to SQL Server, and let's say if it is waiting to acquire a thread, that could be termed as thread pool wait type. Now, uh, some of you who might be new to the concept of wait stats and wait types, it might get a little overwhelming to begin with, but I'll just make it very, very simple. In two minutes, you are sending your request to SQL Server. It needs resources. And when it has to wait for resources, thankfully, SQL Server can capture those resources. And uh, sorry, when it's waiting, it, it can capture those weights that you're waiting for a specific resource. So a specific weight type is assigned to all kinds of waiting. For example, your query might be waiting for CPU, it might be waiting for IO, it might be waiting for memory. So there are so many dozens of these wait types that are like classified inside SQL Server, and you can track them, you can monitor them, and you can record them, so on and so forth. One such wait type is called as thread pool. What does it mean? When you send your query to SQL Server, as I said, it barely it needs at bare minimum one thread to execute. And if it is not able to acquire that thread, if it is waiting, then that wait type is called as thread pool. Yes, T-H-R-E-A-D-P-O-O-L. Now, if I look into this DMV, this DMOS waiting tasks, and I search on wait type like thread, let's go and execute. You can see right now, it's a very quasine SQL server sitting very nice. I mean, the perfect conditions that you would ever want and nothing, no thread or no request or no task is waiting for anything related to thread. Okay, so once again, the, your numbers are about 120, et cetera, and um, that's where you go. Okay, so this is that. Let's switch over to the next SSMS window. 
Now, in this SSMS window, so we have this configuration. First, I have turned on DAC, advanced option is all on, remote admin connections has been turned off. I have looked at the number of threads. Okay, so I've launched another instance of SSMS. I've made sure the object explorer is off. I've put down these notes so that when you play around with these scripts, you can just follow the instructions. Now, let's open the simple query and run it. Hopefully everything will go well. Where is our simple query? So I'll go to this folder and let's jump over here and go to the first one CTP. There is my simple query. I'm going to use AdventureWorks 2014 database and the simple query here is select start from person dot address type. Let's go select and execute. Yeah, everything goes well, right? Execute this multiple times, no problem. Let's jump back to the next query window here. Now it says open thread pool.sql and run the update statement inside a transaction and run the simple query again. Hopefully everything will go well. Okay, let's do that. Now just follow around what's happening, right? This was a simple select statement that executed well. Okay, let's go back to the folder and let's open thread pool.sql here. Okay, and I'm going to again use AdventureWorks 2014 database. Now look at this query. I'm beginning a transaction and I am updating a table here, sales order detail. I'm setting order quantity to something where sales order ID is equal to something. It's not important, but what is important is you're running an update statement inside a transaction. All of you have already noticed that there is no rollback or commit, which means this is an in-flight transaction. Now let's go and execute this, right? 12 rows are affected. Now, I'm sure all of you have guessed it that these 12 rows at this very moment are locked. This is an update statement and we are in the default isolation level, which is read committed. And which means what? This is a writer and um, it's firing an update statement. So the exclusive locks are being held. A very, very simple scenario. Thank you.